All right, 5.2. 5.2 is factoring, is what we're talking about here. So this is basically just some warm-ups here um, with some factoring. So let's figure out what um, we get here. With factoring, basically here's what happens. Factoring consists of this. What multiplies to give you this number right here that will add to give you this? So you need to think of two numbers. Two numbers that multiply to give you a 100, right? Well, that's simple, right? 1 and 100. Or I could have 2 and 50. Or I could have um, 4 and 25. Um, I could have 5 and 20. All right? And I could keep doing this over and over again, right? Uh, I could have 10 and 10, all right? And we can keep going and make our list. But the point is, these are all numbers that multiply. When you multiply them together, we'll give you 100. However, not only do you need to find a list that does that, but which ones of these also add to give you 20? Well, when I add those together, that gives me 101. So that doesn't work. When I add those, this gives me 52. No, that doesn't work. When I add those, this gives me 29. Nope, that doesn't work. When I add those, this gives me 25. And nope, that doesn't work. When I add those, however, that gives me 20. That means, hooray, I found my answers. That's what it means. That means if that's 10 and that's 10, that works. Two numbers that multiply together to give me 20 or sorry, multiply to give me 100, and add to give me um, 20. So when you set this up, you take the first one, which is a positive 10, and the second one, which is a positive 10, you write x plus 10, and x plus 10. The positive 10 one in here, the positive 10 one in there. And there is x plus 10 and x plus 10. So taking a look at the next one, taking a look at the next problem there, um, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you 25 that add to give you 10. So sometimes you'll see teachers write them like this. How many multiply to give you 25 that add to give you 10? Well, multiply, multiples of 25, you have 1 and 25, and 5 and 5, that's it. Well, 5 and 5, right? Positive 5 and positive 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 plus 5 is 10, so that works. Which means the first one would be x plus 5. And the next one would be x plus 5. And there are your factors. That one's already done. Taking a look here now at these. What two numbers multiply to give you 36 that add to give you 12? Well, look at your multiples of 36. You have 1 and 36. You have 2 and times 13. You have 3 times 12. You have 4 times 9. You have 6 times 6. Well, is there any when you look at that list that you can see jump out at you? This one right away. When I add those, eh, that's really high. When I add those, I'm close, but that gives me 15. When I add those, I get 15. When I add those, I get 13. When I add those, there it is, 6 and 6. So what that means is when I split this up, it is x plus, because it's a positive 6, and x plus 6. So there's your answer to that one. Over here, what multiplies to give you 49 that adds to give you 14? Well, you got 1 and 49. Right? You got 1 and 49. And the only thing I can think of is 7 and 7. Well, guess what? 7 plus 7 is. Bingo! So when we're doing this, first one is x plus 7, because it's a positive 7. And the second one is x plus 7. And already done. All right, so now you still can factor these, but here's the problem. The problem with these are they aren't in order, so you have to make them in order first, or we can't factor these. 
So when I rewrite this in order, in standard form, it's an x squared first, then it's a 29, right, x, and then it is a 12. Okay, so looking at a problem like this, you can either guess and check, right, you can either guess and check, or you're going to have to do a method, and you can either factor by grouping, which we didn't talk about at all yet, or we're going to do a technique that I like called slide and divide. So, you're used to factoring items like you did before. So we are going to try to slide and divide now. And what that means is you take that 15, and we're going to slide it over. So what happens here is we get an x squared, as we slid that over, we still have the 29 x, but 15 times 12. What is 15 times 12? 180, right? So we do 15 times 12, and we get 180. So this is what we're looking at. What two numbers multiply to give you 180 that add to give you 29? That's what we're looking at. So you basically just have to start plugging and chugging. Right, thinking of all the numbers that go into 180 is really the only way you can do this problem. Okay, so thinking of everything uh, possible that goes in, and let's see here. I'm still plugging and chugging myself, trying to figure it out. Okay. Alright, so the only thing that comes to mind for me that works is 20 and 9, right? Because 20 times 9 is 180, 20 plus 9 is 29, which means I factor this into x plus 20 and x plus 9. Okay, so that's what we factor that into. So we have x plus 20 and x plus 9, but here's the problem. This is why it's called slide and divide. I slide by 15, right? I slide by 15, which means now I need to divide both of these numbers by 15. Slide and divide, so here's the second part. So when you divide, here's the catch. When you divide, okay, when we divide, you need to simplify. So what can I take out of both of these? I can divide those both by a 5, right? So when I do so, that gives me x plus 4 over 3. Over here, I can take a 3 out of both the top and the bottom, which leaves me with an x plus 3 over 5. Now, we can't keep our factors like this, so I move this 3 up right beside it, so I end up with a 3x plus 4 as a factor. And I move this 5 up and over as well, because we can't have fractions in factors. So we have 5x plus 3, and those are my two factors for that problem. So when we come back here, we will try slide and divide again.